Hey guys, it's Lauren Yates from Rave It Up here. And today we're going to be having a chat over Zoom with Tom Wolfe from country band The Wolf Brothers. They've just released their new single, Anybody Ever. So we're going to have a chat about that, as well as their single, No Breaks, how they've been getting through COVID. And then we're also going to go back to talk about Australia's Got Talent and their experience on that show. There's so much to cover, so let's get into it now. Tom, welcome to Rave It Up. It is a pleasure to have you on our show today. How are you going? I'm going really well. Thank you um, very much for having me on. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm doing, doing really good. I've just moved into a new house. Yeah, is that near the farm in Tasmania or somewhere completely yeah. different? Yeah, no, this is on the farm. All of this is clean, but there down is just, I'm surrounded by boxes. So um, If you didn't tell us, we would never have known. So I don't know why you told us. <laughs> no, 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 all was well. And um, yeah, moved um, into uh, another, the main house on the farm where me and my wife are uh, going to live now. My wife's pregnant, so it's a bit bigger. So we're going to raise our little family here. So it's congratulations, um, by the way. I was going to bring that up later. A baby girl. Yeah, a little baby girl on the way. So very exciting and a lot of change, but all really great stuff, you know. So um, yeah, it's it's been um, in a year that's been quite um, tough. It, it has had it's definitely had its positives, I guess. So uh, yeah, with a, with a baby on the way, I'd say that's a really good accomplishment. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's all right. Well, it's funny what happens when you don't go on tour, you know. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You've actually got time. <laughs> Is this your first or your second child? No, this will be my first. So um, both of our first. Oh, even more exciting. Yeah, it is. Um, it's all a bit daunting and a bit um, bit new. We went to um, the baby shop the other day in town here and we sort of walked in and we were like, what, where do we even start? Like, I don't even know where to start here. Like, uh, but there were some really helpful people and, and uh, my mum and Ali's mum and dad are amazing. So, um, so yeah, it's good, exciting, new, new chapter and we've got, we got plenty of help. So, uh, very good. Have really you got good. any names figured out yet? We do. We, we have some names we like, but we, we've decided that we've, we wanted to find out whether it was boy or girl, and we're happy to tell people that, but the names we're going to keep. Good. For us. Well, well, we'll definitely have a look out for May, around May next year when she's due. We'll have a look on social media what you end up calling her. <laughs> yeah, it'll be nothing too crazy. I'm, I'm um, you know, I'm, I'm probably sometimes a bit of a traditionalist and, you know, I don't like, just because I'm a musician doesn't mean I should call my, you know, child, I don't know. Apple or pear or something really bizarre, you know. So uh, don't don't expect anything too out there. I'm really actually glad to hear that. There's some really crazy names out there, and I feel sorry for the kids. <laughs> yeah, you're just like what are you? Oh, look. yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, what are you thinking? Yeah, anyway, it's all good. It's all good stuff. It's like we want to try to stop the bullying. I don't think giving him a name <laughs> like that is going to help on the playground. <laughs> uh, well, my my joke was always be you know if I have a son. It'll be Wolfgang Wolf. So when he's at the playground, it'll be Wolf Wolf. Like that poor child wouldn't stand a chance. But um, yeah, yeah. Luckily we have a girl. So uh, no, it's, it's going to be lovely, and it's 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 um, yeah, bloody exciting. I won't lie, I'm really excited. So uh, well, enjoy the next chapter of life. Congratulations to you and your wife. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I know the the farm's really really big. Does that mean you all live on the farm just in separate houses? Yeah. So um, kind of like um, basically. This property, this room I'm actually in right now, it was the original one-room shack that my great-grandfather built back in 1899. So, and then then they had a child. So if you see over there, you might see some boxes. So there's the fireplace. And then they basically had a child. So then they, they put a door there and went through to another room. And that was how it started, like the... Um, some of the rooms are up and down and all this stuff because they literally just had a child and kept adding on. And so, yeah, me and Ali are the fourth gen will be the fourth generation to live here. Um, but there's a bunch of pickers huts. So I, I've, over the last few years, being a carpenter before I was a musician, I've renovated a few of them. So me and my wife actually um, renovated one six years ago and we, we lived in that, sort of got us our start. And little, little old pickers hut, beautiful thing. And, um, but yeah, not the most spacious thing in the world you know especially um, for a baby coming along <laughs> exactly so this is this is my my mum and dad made this a lot bigger um so we sort of thought this was probably the, the best move for us but um yeah it's it, it's um it's it's beautiful it, it's one of the most um 
I love it here. I feel so at home and happy here and the farm's been a big part of not just our life, but it's sort of become a big part of our musical life as well. It's what we've sort of, you know, we've sang a lot about. We've had some hits about this place. And, um, and you've got your awards yeah. surrounding you, I see. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but I see the CMC award in the corner there on the top. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. no, look, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I've been so lucky. With all the success we've had, it's been um, it's mind blowing sometimes, and sometimes it's it's nice to sort of look back, especially when you're doing interviews like this, and you kind of re- you don't forget, but you know you get so caught up in the moment. Sometimes you can look back and yeah, you think about what you've actually done, and you're like, wow, that's really cool. <laughs> so it's it's really cool, really cool. Like, oh yeah, I did that. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. As I said, it's great to finally have you on the show because you probably already know, but Brody Rainbow, your band member, has been on the show twice now. Like, he just, he loves coming on. And yeah. I don't know if you remember back in 2018, we did quickly meet after your show at Penrith RSL. I even have a photo here. Oh, you remember that? <laughs> I do remember that. Yes, I do. Yes, yeah. I do. Yeah. So it's great to finally have a proper chat to you today and hear your side of the Wolf Brothers because, you know, Brody had his side, but, you know, he's not actually a Wolf Brother. (laughs) Oh, look, he's Tasmanian, so, you know, we're all related down here apparently. (laughs) Exactly, especially growing up together. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, we did. I mean, um, love Brody. He's my brother, he's my best mate, and um, we've we've done so many amazing things together and... um, you know, in the last few years, he's, he's put more of a focus on his own music, which is something um, um, we, me and Nick are both, we're really proud of him, you know. I think we've always sort of believed he, he, he can only be what you are in this world and you've got to do your thing, what makes you happy. And, um, yeah, it's really nice to see Brode um, pushing himself out of his comfort zone to, to grow as an artist and a musician and a songwriter, and I think that's... Um, very commendable. Very commendable. And you guys have definitely helped him get there, which is just even more beautiful. Oh, well, it's the team. It's all about the team, isn't it? You know, I'm very lucky. Very lucky. Um, I sometimes feel for solo artists and, you know, because the music business, music is fun, but sometimes the music business can be very draining. And I sometimes feel for solo artists and I think, you know, geez, if you had to make these decisions on your own, must be so tough, you know. So me and Nick and, and the boys have always been so lucky we've sort of had each other and we can, you know. Lean on each other. Yeah, lean on each other, exactly. So, um, yeah, that's that's made made the journey a lot more fun and, and a lot, I think, easier in a lot of ways. Yeah. Well, speaking about reminiscing before, I'd actually love to take you back down your track a little bit and talk about Australia's Got Talent, if that's okay. So you guys yeah, were the runners-up in 2012, for those who don't know. But I was doing a bit of research, and you act- you guys actually released a self-titled EP in May 2010. So that was two years earlier. How was it releasing an EP before you got the exposure of the show? And do you think the show kind of helped that EP even more? A- absolutely. Like... Um, in all honesty, I I don't think it could have went better because, um, you know, going back to 2007, 2008, we were a cover band, you know, we were playing every weekend um, all over the place. And then we sort of went, well, this is fun, but it would be great to do our own music. Hence, we started writing songs, the EP was born, and, and we'd sort of built this really strong following up in Tassie in these country pubs, we'd pick different country pubs and then just keep going there once a month until it became, you know, a big event. You'd be going to these pubs in the middle of nowhere and there'd be 500 people there. So then the EP came out and that was wonderful. Like, everyone had it in their utes and you'd hear it in the car park before the gig. Um, it was online, you know. We had all the, all the groundwork was kind of done so when we got the exposure of Australia's Got Talent, then this wasn't planned. This was just uh, beautiful timing, I guess. The idea of the show come up. To be honest, at first, we were very hesitant and actually all were very keen not to do it. Just purely because of the fact that I guess we're a band and we didn't want to be... We I guess we were a bit worried about maybe the TV world... Put, putting us across the viewers is something we're not. Um, and, and luckily, they were so supportive and they didn't. And 
and what you saw on the TV is basically what the story they told was a bunch of mates who love making music together. So I think when it hit the TV, I think that was also refreshing to viewers because it wasn't a sob story or someone was sick or this is the last chance we're ever going to get to make music because it's not. It's just another amazing opportunity. So that kind of hit and, um, yeah, and it just blew us away. I think all of them songs ended up, there was a point during the show we went on Sunrise and it was like the top 10 Australian iTunes chart was like, Six of them were all of our in- songs we recorded ourselves in our bedroom. I was like, wow, that's really cool. So um, it, it did incredible things for us. I'm so glad we did it because um, it just got us in, in front of so many people, you know, across Australia. And it, it, it just, you know, it sounds almost cheesy, but it really did change our life, you know. And, um, it was just exactly that yeah. push you kind of needed to go up the hill a bit. Oh, ab- absolutely. And I think, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that it still would have happened. but Might have taken right. a bit longer. Yeah, it might have. We were lucky to maybe skip four years <laughs> kind of thing, I think, you know. Um, so, yeah, and, and look, with anything like that, it's not so much what you do on the show, it's almost what you do after it. And um, Yeah, got to keep up with the momentum as people know who you are. You don't want to, like, take a couple of years off. <laughs> no, absolutely. So that's what we did. We just toured and worked and released albums and, you know, we didn't stop for six years, really. I remember, at, at, actually, this is funny, the grand final, we were backstage, it was us and Andrew De Silva, and they were about to announce the winner. They pull the curtain up and we walk out. And I remember saying to the boys right before they did that, I said, well, whatever happens, we're not going to get a break for 10 years. So we're eight years, we're eight years down the track and we're in a global pandemic in a forced break. So that's pretty pretty much right. <laughs> well, it's kind of like what you needed. As you said, you've kind of just been nonstop, you know. You probably wouldn't have been able to get pregnant if you were just continually on the road as well. So it's exactly that time you guys needed. Absolutely. Like, to be honest, I probably didn't realise how burnt out I was. Um, you know, the way I sort of perform and the way I um, do my job, I, I it has to be an all or nothing thing, you know, the way I perform. It's all my energy, you know, I have to put it all out there. Otherwise, I feel like I'm cheating, not just cheating the audience, but I'm cheating myself. So that that's an interesting thing and can be sometimes quite draining. But I've gotten very used to it. But once we were forced to stop and I was stuck at home, I kind of realised, wow, we really needed this. So the time at home on the farm and with my family has just been incredible. But also creatively, like um, we've written so much music and we've sort of had to adapt and been re- remote recording. And like, you know, before I talk to you, like my guitar's here. I-, I wrote a song this morning with someone in America. So, so you know... You kind of just got to adapt and keep moving, and that's definitely what we've done. And I think um, we've made the mo- made the most of it for sure. So, so that's cool. Very cool. And I completely agree with that. Not just from other people I've spoken to in the entertainment industry, but even myself. I feel like everybody in this industry doesn't realize how burnt out they are until they do stop. Yeah, ab- absolutely. And I think yeah, because we're always just yeah. like go go go, and we always want to achieve like the next thing. Absolutely, which is great. I think, and it's so great. And I think it's been part, a big part of our success. But um, yeah, putting the brakes on has been really, really good. <laughs> I won't lie, it's been very good. I totally agree too. Just to really just refresh and figure out where we actually want to go when you know life does start going back to normal. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And I think it's been good for for like it's not good for the industry, but. It will come back, and I think it will come back stronger because I think people have just realised how much they miss live music and, and the arts, you know. Like, it's it's a big part of our culture. It's a huge part of our culture, you know. So um, You said for creativity, fun. you're writing even better songs now. So when we come back out of this, we'll be like, oh, my goodness, like, what can't they do? <laughs> Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Let's go. And I've got to say, small world too, that you're on the same season as Andrew De Silva because I've had him on the show twice now too. He's just an amazing man and another incredibly talented artist. Such a great guy and, um, you know, couldn't have gone to a more deserving winner. And, um, yeah, yeah, there's no bad blood at all there. It's just... Um, Definitely close call, though. Two incredible, you know, he's an incredible artist and you're an incredible band. Like, I don't know how some of the judges or the Australian public choose. 
It was interesting. I think I always considered us a bit of the underdog because, you know, and I don't think even the producers kind of expected us to do as well as we did on that show because, you know, on paper, normally it's a, the pop act or the dance group or something. And here you kind of got four burly guys from Tasmania singing country rock. It's, it's not really on paper you think it's going to go so well. But I think that was the thing. It was so different. The Australian public... Went, yeah, and the people who wouldn't vote actually went, I'm, go- you know what, I'm going to vote. You know, like I'd have people like ringing up the farm shop, you know, who were like 85-year-old women and like grandmothers and grandfathers. And I'm like, you know, I'll just send in a text. I just wanted to say, you know, best of luck. So lovely, you know, so lovely the support we've got. And, um, yeah, incredible, really, absolutely incredible. And still to this day, which is so incredible to see. Just, you've blown up, you guys. I'm so proud of you. Oh, we're getting there. We're getting there. (laughs) More to come. (laughs) Woohoo! I'd love to go back to your childhood a little bit, too, because I know that you guys come from four generations of musicians and farmers. You know, your, your dad was a rock drummer and, you know, his father played the saxophone and his father was a fiddle player. Like, it just goes on and on. But were there any other careers that you and Nick actually wanted to pursue when you were younger or was it just because you're always around music that you just knew that that was the path for you? Yeah, music was was always going to be a part of it in some way. Like, um, I'm not sure if it was always the original goal, but we always loved it so much. So, no, I always loved the idea of being a musician. Wow, that sounds fun. Um... Like, I'm, I'm a qualified carpenter, believe it or not. I'm a carpenter carpenter joiner. But even then, you know, like, I've been very lucky in my life that I've kind of known what I wanted to do since I was a little kid. Like, cleaning up and moving into this house, I actually found some of my old school books. And in one of my, my year six school book, it was like, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I literally had written, I want to be a musician and then spend my spare time doing stuff on the farm. And that's literally what I do with my life now. So I kind of, I got I got to high school and I kind of thought, well, I need a backup plan. So I went and got myself an apprenticeship straight out of, yeah, I went out straight out of grade 10, got an apprenticeship. Um, and, and basically, yeah, the day I actually um, qualified, um, my, I went to my mum and dad and said, well, I've got my qualified now. I think I'll quit and just focus on music. And my mum was like, oh, you can't, you can't quit. And um, um, my dad was just like, yeah, yeah, all right. He's like, well, that part of your life's done, so have a go. So that was, they were always so supportive, so uh, wonderful, really. And, um, yeah, yeah. It, 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 so I've been very lucky in that regard that I've kind of always known what I wanted to do, you know, and I'm very happy that I get to do what I do, you know, I love it very much. I, it's it's just the best, it really is the best job in the world. It is good that you knew that because a lot of kids, they have no idea what they want to do till even they leave school. A- absolutely. I think like, you know, um, I think maybe Nick was a little bit more like that. Like Nick went to uni and studied music and actually has a music degree. But Wow, good on him. Yeah, believe it or not. But I don't think he... I don't think he wanted to be a teacher and he was sort of studying to be a music teacher. So I think he's lucky. He's very happy it kind of panned out the way it panned out. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe teaching can be down the track when you're uh, retired. Who knows? <laughs> I've always said, you know, if I have to go back building, I, I wouldn't mind. It's, it's. I, I do get a good sense of um, there's something nice about doing a hard day's work. I do like that. You know, I like being as creative as we are. I really do like being practical and, whether it be building a fence or something, at the end of the day, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's, there's a good feeling of like, oh, I did that. Yeah, I, I do. I, I got, I got, I'm as good as it gets right here. Good as good. Now, I think we've spoken about your past enough, so let's chat about the present. Your latest project is a fantastic single called Anybody Ever. It is so damn catchy. Everyone's got to listen to it. I love it. Listen to it several times in a row. But I just really want to know, where did this song all come about for you guys and how long did it take to put together? Was it a quick one? Um, it, it, it was. It was. We wrote it quite quickly. Um, 
I guess after the Country Hard album, which came out in 2018, and um, which was so successful, it, it focused a lot on some of the things we talked about, the farm, the loss of our dad, you know, a sort of history. We were pretty honest with our storytelling and that, and it kind of really went really well for us. But a lot of the media and a lot of the stuff we did was, you know, pretty heavily focused on, you know, the death of our dad and then we did some stuff on TV and let's talk about that. So once we sort of dealt with that grief and we'd done that album, I know we were really just wanting to write some fun music. Um, no Breaks, which was the last thing, was one of the first ones we wrote. And it's just fun. And anybody ever is the same. We wrote this with a guy called JT Slater, who's written songs for like, you know, Keith Urban, Reba, Tim McGraw, in, you know, like just a few. Oh, Enrico Glaciers, like, you know, he's an incredible guy. Um, but we recently signed this new record deal. And before we signed, we went over to the States and we did a little showcase for the label there. And he sort of was at the label. He's one of the writers for the BMG. Um, and he saw the showcase and he actually invited us to his house. So we went to his house. He's got a grand piano. And we're sitting around the grand piano. But I picked up on his coffee table was an Elton John songbook. Picked it up, read the lyrics on the back. I was like, oh, all the songs were listed. I was like, wow, that's so cool. Sat it down, looked to my left. There's a Tim McGraw, well, not one, several Tim McGraw platinum albums. I was like, well, that's cool. So that's where the lyric idea comes from in the first verse. Um, when you hear Tiny Dancer, you always sing along. You're crazy on tequila. You love your Tim McGraw. That's where it that came from his lounge room. And then we just sort of wrote, I reckon it wrote it in about an hour. And it started off, the original work tape was, was almost like Fleetwood Mac Eagles-ish. And then we've sort of been locked down and being creative and recording remotely and getting up to things. And I've got a key tar just there. So think we, we kind of we came forward a decade and ended up with this kind of retro 80s sound. But I love that. It's a bit of, bit of a change for you guys. Yeah, we like it. And a big part of what we do is always trying to keep it fresh. And I don't want to fall into the trap of just doing churning out the same thing. Yeah, I'd like to keep, you know, expanding our, our listeners and, and surprising them with what we can create. So I think anybody ever, and No Breaks, anybody ever has been sort of a good setup for this next album and, and the next album or albums. Um, yeah, and there's a bunch of different stuff on it, you know. There's, there's stuff that I call homegrown Wolf Brothers tunes that people will be like, yep, yeah, I know what that is. I know they're talking about. Um, and that's great. And then there'll also be... Some pretty out there stuff, and yeah, I'm excited. That's been it's been fun to do that. Really, really fun to push ourselves. You know, really, really cool. Well, I definitely think like the lyrics of this song is what makes it so damn catchy. But I did want to know how do you guys ever get tongue tied with because there's so many like ever's, nobodies, anybody's in the song, and I'm like, how 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 are they doing this? <laughs> Yeah, 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 it is a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah, we did a few gigs um, recently. The hardest bit to sing is the falsetto bit. You know, it sounds great recorded, and then you got to do that live. You're like, oh, okay, that wasn't a good idea. Um, so that's funny. But, um, yeah, we do a bit. I, I find the bit hard to sing um, into the first first verse. Um you know I know you and I, you know I love you and I want it all. I, I just, every time I sing that, I'm always like, blah, 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 blah. It just, it just comes out as nothing. So, um, yeah, but it's cool. It's a really cool lyric. Like, yeah, I, I, I really enjoy the lyric. I, I, it's probably one of my favourite lyrics we've written, I think. I think it's, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty catchy it's, and it's simple, but sometimes those simple things are the hardest things to write. But luckily this one just kind of, it just was born. Sometimes they're just the songs are just in the air, and you just you just got to grab them. So uh, we we're very lucky to get that one. Very lucky. Well, you have mentioned your song "No Breaks" a couple of times, and it did so well. Like it, it was on the number one spot on the national country airplay charts for seven consecutive weeks. That's incredible, holding a chart record. So, was there any like? sort of, I'm going to use the word anxiety about putting this record out and making it as successful as the last one? Um, yeah, like, yeah, there was definitely that anxiety. It's funny, you know, with no breaks, 
everyone was pumped about it. Like Nick was pumped, management were pumped, the label were pumped. I thought releasing No Breaks would end our careers. I'm like, this is it. Really? Yeah, I don't know why. I just, I don't know why. I just had, I was in a very, I don't know, I was in a different place. And then, yeah, and then it sort of come out and it's just gone number one for forever. <laughs> like, I went back into the top 20 last week, which is, and was, you know, like, and but, um, yeah, it kind of really caught me by surprise. So I'll eat my hat on that one. I was, I was wrong. Um but it's great, you know, like it, there definitely was a lot of pressure after no breaks. But I feel like for me, I also sort of thought, well, with COVID and everything that's happened this year, if there's any time to take a bit of a chance and try something different, this is it. So hence, it, hence, yeah, anybody ever has been out there, 80s drums, you know, video game inside music video, I thought, let's just do something different, you know. Well, uh, I was just going to bring that up too because the video clip is really awesome. Who came up with that idea? Incredible full idea. Credit. Full credit with credit is due. Nick was, um, yeah, Nick Nick came up with a lot of that. He actually had the idea. He even drew. He did drawings and he had to take one of of his drawings, yeah. Wow, uh, great artist. <laughs> cause, yeah, well, I don't know about that. I have to show, I, why do you say the drawings first? Um, but when he, like, I love shooting in beautiful landscapes and around Australia, and I mean, especially Tasmania and our farm, which we've done a lot. Um, so that's kind of go-to number one for us. Um, and not being able to do that for um, for anybody ever because of lockdown and not being able to work with people, it was really like make us think outside our comfort zone and outside the box and hence anybody ever um, sort of came to be. And, yeah, I, I'm so happy. I, I'm actually blown away myself how good it come up like you know it just come up better than expected you know um yeah really great idea we got actually a guy in spain actually put that um he put that together yeah i was gonna ask how was that whole you know whole thing executed just a lot of video editing i'm guessing Uh, he yeah he 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 made the he made an animation for the entire song and then we kind of filmed some things at home and spliced all that in but, yeah, he, I think he actually drew it onto, like, a, I guess, like, an iPad scanner type thing and then put that in the computer and did his... Like, he worked on it for, like, a month. But, you know, like, he was pumped because he was, like, locked down. We actually had a FaceTime with him and he could speak English. It's pretty broken, but, um, yeah, it was, he was so cool. He was like, you know, I love this. He's like, because Spain has been really badly hit by COVID. So he's like, it's been good. He's like, I've just stayed at home and done this. <laughs> so, yeah. So um, really, really fun and really different. And um, I'm glad I'm glad we, glad we, in a way, I'm always glad we had to think of it out of the box because it would, would have been a fully different clip otherwise, I reckon. And what an easy shoot day for you guys. You kind of just had to sit and pretend to play video games, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that was easy. Normally, you know, like, I'm hauling trailers and film crew across the state and I'm finding remote locations out in the bush on mates' farms, you know, like storm rolling in was like, you know, it took like a week. <laughs> you know, I had to go to a mate's farm and I had trailers and horses and actors. It just took forever. But, um, it look, I'm so glad it worked out. But, yeah, I love it. Really cool. And, like, literally we got in to shut our stuff two hours. I was like... All we did was play, pretend to play video games and have a beer. I was like, yeah, I can do this. This is pretty easy. I can I can sort this out. Yeah. Well, that's on YouTube now for everyone to check out. Let's get some more views for you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's underrated. It's underrated at the moment, I think. I think. Um, it sure is. But watching it, it like, just brings you back to those old video game days. <laughs> yeah, we still... Even the Atari that was in the music video is like owls from when we were kids. <laughs> really? <laughs> you still yeah. have it. <laughs> yeah, it's just in the shed. Oh, wow. I'll just put that in there. So, uh, great. Authenticity. Great. That's what we like in a video clip. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, I have a bit of a funny question for you guys because I was just thinking when I was putting these questions together, I was like, you guys have several albums out. You also have released, you know, heaps of singles and everything. And you've been around the industry for a while now. Do you guys, you know 
ever have, especially performing live, ever get a little, little bit confused of what song you're at and forget the lyrics and go, oh damn, what are we up to? <laughs> yeah, all the time. Often, more than more than we probably like. I, I'm so used, my role, like, because Nick sings lead, but I'm sort of doing harmonies on Nick. So I'm so used to kind of following Nick. So if I have to have to sing a Wolf Brothers song on my own, which I've had to do a bit in COVID with live streams and stuff, like, these are songs I've written. And then I'll go to pick up a guitar and I'll be like, uh, what's the first verse? What's... I don't know, it just goes. But if I go to sing it with Nick, I'll sing every word with him. So we do. We do probably more we'd like, to be honest with you. Well, it's kind of like goes back to what you said about feeling bad for solo artists. At least you guys can, you know, work off each other and go, what? how does this start again? I, I tell you what, there's going to be some serious um, serious cobwebs um, come. We've got a full band gig um, in the end of December, just after Christmas on the 27th. Um, and it'll be the first time we've played as a band since March, so there's going to be some serious cobwebs that need to be blown out before that, I think. There's going to need to be a couple of rehearsals just to... I was thinking about some of the songs the other day. I was like, oh, yeah, that one. I was like, what key's that in? So, um, yeah, it, it is all in there, though. It's very funny. Like, you pick it up and you go, oh, there it is. Yeah, and it just comes again. So um, Yeah, I have noticed on your website, too, you've got the December show and you've got, you know... A- a couple in January and actually all the way up to May, which is very exciting for you guys. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's wonderful to be, you know, uh, be able to put dates on the website and be getting emails and phone calls about gigs and having to promote tickets again. So I think it's all starting to come back. Um, yeah, I, I think a year from now, touch wood, I, I think we might be pretty close to being somewhere normal touch wood <laughs> I, hope. I hope but i think you know there seems like there's you know the vaccines and the, the treatment i think maybe normal in australia i think maybe some other parts of the world have got a bit to go but yeah it might take a little while to get back overseas yeah that is what it is. i mean we were meant to be in canada this year we were meant to go to america we were meant to be doing all these things and we haven't done any of it but that's life. That's life. That's what happens. But just enjoy performing live again in your home country. We do. No, we will. We're hanging. We're absolutely hanging for it, let me tell you. Yeah, well, I'm excited. I can't wait to see you live again. It's been two years. <laughs> I can't wait to see us live again. <laughs> <laughs> While I have you here today, our, our show is not only, you know, fun and funny, but I also love to, you know, t- bring up some of the real topics and, you know, something a lot of our listeners have been wanting to know lately is how other people have been getting through COVID, especially mental health wise, you know, being stuck at home, you know, you're kind of really relying on, on your family, your friends, so many, you know, <laughs> Zoom calls and things like that, Ex- except for, I guess, creating your music because I wouldn't say everybody else in the population is just creating beautiful uh, uh, works of art, but what else have you guys been doing to get through COVID mental health wise? Has it affected you, especially since you had to stop touring and performing live? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, initially for me, the first couple of weeks, I was obviously very down and out about it. kind of just watch my business and my life disappear overnight. Um, But what I've sort of reminded, well, my wife got pretty stuck into me. She's like, well, you can't control it. You've got to just do something. So um, I got, I just really focused on what I can control, you know, so I can control what songs I write. Um, But for me, I've been probably one of the lucky ones where I've got the farm. So I've gone back to, you know, I've been, Plant new raspberries, fix some fences, rebuilding workshops. I wrote myself my gunner list, my, my gunner do jobs at the start of COVID, and I pretty much ticked them all off. So, oh, um, congrats. Yeah, yeah. So that's been great. That's been a good feeling, and I've renovated this house, and I don't sit still. Look, I, I don't sit still very well. Like, I'm doing this interview now in a flannelette shirt and a work hat because, you know, I've been just out on the farm just before I come here to do this. It's just how I am. I can't help it, you know. Like I, I don't sit still well, so I, um, I keep myself busy. So I'm very lucky and very driven in that um, that regard. But 
what I did do is I did just make sure I checked in with a lot of my muso mates. That was something I did. Send him a text, give him a call out of the blue, whatever. I did that. I tried to do that as much as I could during lockdown, just because there was some of them, you know, locked down in apartments in Sydney, you know, where I've got a farm and stuff I can do. That, well, they, you know, that's they couldn't, you know. So um, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I consider myself one of the lucky ones. Yeah, definitely. And I see you've grown out your hair as well. <laughs> bit of COVID hair, is it? <laughs> really, yeah. It's a real mullet now. Like, it's a real proper mullet now. My, my wife my wife refuses to touch it now. She's like, no. I've committed, no, I've committed to the year. I actually had the beard, but I shaved that off, and then I realised that was the worst decision I've ever made. So the beard's coming back. Um, but, yeah, I, I like, look at that. It's like a rat's tail now because I've been out doing um, yeah, I did a did a couple of acoustic gigs, and I had to like I had to like fully condition it. <laughs> oh wow! So, yeah, I just thought, you know what, I'm going to commit to it this year, and then we'll see what see what start of 2021 brings. We'll just see. Yeah, we'll we'll see in the new year. We'll look at photos on uh, you know on social media and go, ah, okay, yep, he's kept it or he's cut it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's the plan. That's the plan. Well, hopefully we've helped some of our listeners out today today with any issues that they might be going through, struggling with. But yeah, just find something to occupy yourself is pretty much yeah, what I've learned from you. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's my thing. Like, I, just think of what you. You can control. For me, this is what I do. I think about what I can control and what I can do. And I'm a, I'm a list guy, so I'll write a list. And some of it can be so small, you know, just getting certain little things done during the day. But I find if I do that, it really helps me. It really helps me, you know. Look at the end of the day and go, exactly. So I think that's really good. I think that's a really, that's, I learned that one years ago. It's very good. Keeps me moving. And even though you guys have already achieved so much in your career, what else can we expect from you in the future? Hopefully another album in the future. Fingers yeah, crossed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I think we've sort of we've pretty much made two albums this year. So I think we might do a double album or or like a series of albums. Um so yeah, that's kind of where we're at. So I don't want to use the word concept album, but it's kind of going to be a slight concept album. Um, again, always expect the unexpected with us. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I've still got a fair bit, like, you know, with us, I've still got a fair bit I want to prove. Still, I think I still feel like, I, I still feel like we've got more fuel in the tank to sort of prove a few things yet, you know. So that, 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 that keeps me going. And I think all the things I have lost this year will all come back. You know, so but I'd love goal. Goal of ours has always been to try and to get some, some international success. You know, just, just even if it's just a little bit. You know, because I've always, you know, my my father's words are ringing in my ears. Of you know, he used to say, "You've got as good a chance as the next next bloke." And um, I've always thought when we've done things, that well, if they can do it, we can do it. You know, so uh, that that's where I'd like to see us. Just try and get a little bit, yeah, a little bit of success there, and. Um, that's the goal. Well, the biggest thing in the industry the is just staying in the race because some people just give up, and if you stay in the race, you'll get there. You do it long enough, you know, they'll end up giving you an award, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great, wonderful. So, yeah, I think it's just, yeah, or well, even I think Keith, to quote Keith Richards, he was asked about how he lived his lifestyle and doing it. He said, the question is not to think of how I do it, but just keep doing it. So that's what we're going to do. Just keep doing it. I love it. Well, we are unfortunately getting to the end of the interview, Tom. It's been so much fun. It's gone so damn quickly. <laughs> but as a closing statement, and was probably the most important question, knowing what you know now, what would you tell your 14-year-old self? How long we got? <laughs> um, I would tell him to be patient. A little bit more patience, um, and I would tell him actually to look after himself maybe a little better. Um, as I touched on before, I, when I perform, I, I do it all or nothing, and that 
mentality within me has done some incredible things in our life. And I think sometimes it's almost, and even Nick said this, it's probably been one of the reasons why we've been so successful, you know, because I've just constantly driven to the next goal. But it's also been um, at times, not too bad, but I have, it's been quite damaging to my own <laughs> mental and physical health over the years when, you know, I've, uh, if I'm going to party, I will party. And, uh, yeah, so I would I would just tell myself patience and just, just you know, look after yourself. But I think you only learn that by doing. And uh, now I'm uh, a little bit older. I've got a few more ideas about how to do that. So, yeah, that's part of life. Well, I think that's good advice for the younger listeners too. Patience and look after yourself. Yeah, because it... Can go into your adulthood. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, can. <laughs> and before we go, if the listeners would like to contact you guys or find out what you're up to in the future, where should they go? Yeah, um, www.thewolfbrothers.com. There's links to the Instagram, the Facebook, the YouTube channel. You've got to check out the film clip. We're even on the world of TikTok now, which I find hard to believe sometimes. But we're out there. Um, yeah, love to hear from you. Drop us a line and... Um, yeah, yeah, we're looking forward to seeing everyone. And we'll keep an eye out for any future albums and, you know, if people want to go see your shows, those tour dates are on the website too. Absolutely, yeah. Well, show's coming in. 2021 is going to be the return of the gig, so uh, we can't wait to see Can't wait. Yeah. I will definitely be coming along to one. I loved your last show. Good. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today, Tom. I really appreciate your time. Pleasure. Thanks so much. I better go do farm stuff, I suppose. Now I'm dressed like a farm. <laughs> so. Well, you're, you're welcome on the show anytime as well. So if you want to come back on the future, chat about some more songs, more albums, just let me know. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for supporting. Thanks, everybody. Well, I hope you all enjoyed today's interview. If you'd like to check out any of our other interviews, visit our website, raveituptv.com. All of the videos and our podcasts are there. And make sure to check out also our podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts or wherever you have a listen to your podcasts. And make sure to share it with your friends. But for now, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.